You're about to undertake a journey through Dickens, London. We're standing here on Fleet Street, just a stone's throw from St. Paul's Cathedral. And Dickens certainly knew Fleet Street, once the street of ink. This is where all the newspapers were. And around us are all the old newspaper buildings. Yet just a stone's throw away from here is a little enclave called Took's Court. And it's there we shall begin our journey through Dickensian London. Well, you've strayed into Took's Court, a delightful little enclave set away from the rush and bustle of modern London. In fact, this is an area that Charles Dickens knew intimately. He wrote about it in Bleak House, although he refers to Took's Court as Cook's Court. Bleak House is his most scathing attack on the very fabric of Victorian society. And here, in Cook's Court, a little way from the bustle of modern Holborn, Mr. Snagsby, the law stationer of Bleak House, has his home and his business premises. Cook's Court still remembers this, because just around the corner here, we still have a house, supposedly the site where Mr. Snagsby's shop was, and this house is still referred to and still known as Dickens House. Just one of those lovely parts of secret London. But follow me now as we cross Chancery Lane and make our way across Lincoln's Inn, for we're off now to the old curiosity shop. So dial 08459797 and let us go in search of another gem of Dickensian London. Well, we've left Tooks Court and we've turned right into Cursitor Street. We're now approaching Chancery Lane. And on the other side of Chancery Lane is another Dickensian landmark. For when Charles Dickens was a teenager, no older than 14 or 15, he got a job working as an office boy for a company called Ellis and Blackmore, a stone's throw away from here on the other side of Holborn. On his first day, he was wearing a very handsome blue sailor suit and was sent out on an errand. When he returned, he was somewhat dishevelled, sporting a black eye. One of the senior partners in the firm asked him how he came by his black eye. Well, said Charles Dickens, I was crossing Chancery Lane from Lincoln's in Old Gate when this blackguard of a fellow walks up to me, doffs my cap and said, hello, a soldier, which I didn't much care for. So I kicked him in the shin, whereupon he blacked my eye. So perhaps a gateway of some significance to the young Charles Dickens. And so let's beware of blackguard fellows pass through Lincoln's Inn and go off now to the old curiosity shop. Well, the teenage Dickens got his black eye on the other side of Lincoln's Inn. We're now in Lincoln's Inn Fields, London, WC2. And Charles Dickens certainly knew this area. Indeed, in Lincoln's Inn, this is where the barristers, the wigged and robed practitioners of the English art of advocacy, lawyers, they have their chambers over there. And Charles Dickens begins Bleak House by comparing the legal system to a London fog. He speaks of fog everywhere, fog up the river, fog down the river, fog in the lungs of the ancient Greenwich pensioners where it rolls defiled amongst the brigs and barges of a great and dirty city. And in Lincoln's Inn Old Hall, at the very heart of that fog, sits the Lord High Chancellor in his High Court of Chancery. Never can there come fog too thick, nor mud and mire too deep to contend with the founderings that this court, this day, most wretched of hoary sinners, holds in the sights of heaven and of earth. As you've no doubt gathered, Dickens wasn't particularly fond of lawyers. Well, we've just turned left out of Lincoln's Inn Fields and we've entered Portsmouth Street, so-called because once upon an age this was the farmland belonging to the Duchess of Portsmouth. And here in Portsmouth Street is a building that's almost too good to be true. The old curiosity shop, as you'll see there, immortalised by Charles Dickens. Indeed, many say that this was the shop that Dickens had in mind when he wrote the old curiosity shop. Dickens certainly knew the building. In fact, in his day, it was owned by a bookbinder named Tessiman. And Dickens certainly did come here to have his books bound. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into Dickens' London. But bear in mind, there are many, many more sites to see connected with Charles Dickens in the capital. And so, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. And if you'd like to see more of those sites, dial 08457070 and we can send you more details of how to explore the London of Charles Dickens. Until then, as Tiny Tim would say, God bless us, every one of us.